Welcome to the Moody's Tyronado Football Extra. For honesty and service comes first. Serving Williamson County for over 70 years. Visit us at Moody's Tire for all your tire and automotive needs. Stop by and see us at 1600 Columbia Avenue. Well, hello everyone and welcome to the Moody's Tire and Auto Football Extra. My name is Charles Fulham with the Williamson Herald, joined here by Maurice Patton of MoPattonSports.com. We call him many things as well, but he's also our pick guy. He's our expert when it comes to prep. I mean, come on, a little bit of everything. Jack of all trades, you know what they say. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are out here at Page High School where this is really one of the only tickets in town, this county, as uh, you know, each season you come across those uh, unique weeks where it seems like a lot of people have the same bye week. But Battleground Academy coming out here to Page, and they're going to be playing for the first time since 1988. What do you think of this matchup? I think I might have been at that last one. <laughs> um, you know, it's exciting to see these two playing. Like you were saying, they used to play in the same district and that kind of thing back before the public-private split and that kind of thing. And, and it was a pretty hot ticket then, and I expect it will be this week as well. Um, BGA obviously playing pretty well right now. They're 4-0, just came off of a big win against University School of Jackson last week. Um, Paige has been playing awfully well as well also. And I think you're going to see two really good passing attacks with Michael McGochie for Paige, with Clay Bethard and, and Marcus Cawthorn for BGA. And um, so you may be here a while if you come. Um, although I don't know how many incomplete passes there will be either. So, but I think, I think it's going to be a good game. I think it's going to be a fun game. And it's going to be a test for, for BGA stepping up against a 4A program like Paige, who is, you know, maybe a little stronger than some of us anticipated coming into the year. I think with that BGA team too, I mean, you know, you, you always got play along with Cawthorn. Those guys are just playmakers out there. They get the job done. They've combined for nine touchdowns this season alone already. And you just expect them to be keeping going, but they don't really have that established run game yet. Page, on the other hand, has got Dewall, Michael Roberts a little bit. What do you think about that ground game situation? You know, that could be the difference in the ball game, which defense is able to stand up against the pass and which offense is able to establish a run game. And like you said, Page may have the advantage there with Michael Roberts, who, as much as he plays on defense, is also a guy who can be a closer back there in the run game if Paige gets up late and starts to want to run clock and that kind of thing. Like you said, BGA hasn't quite found that proven factor in the run game yet, and that's something that I know Rock Batten and that staff want to try to get done, and this week would be as good a time to do it as any. Now, one of the only other county games, well, the only other county game in, in county, that right. for that matter, is uh, Fairview hosting Hickman County. We looked up a little thing about uh, Hickman County there, but uh, Fairview coming off a of bye week and that win at Waverly Central. So what do you think the Yellow Jackets are going to do at home here? You know, Fairview, they lost out here in the opener, dropped another one to Creekwood the week after that, but they won back-to-back -back since then. They beat Waverly going into the bye who Hickman County just lost to last week. Hickman County won their first two, lost two straight. So you got two teams kind of going in opposite directions there to a degree. And I think it was probably good that Fairview was able to go into the bye off of a win because I played softball with Chris Hughes. He doesn't <laughs> lose very well. And um, I can only imagine if they had gone into the bye one and three with the loss, how ugly things could have gotten out there. But um, I think we had pretty high expectations for this Fairview team coming into the year. And I think with them getting back to two and two, heading into the bye, coming out, feel pretty good about them this week. Well, that's just those those confidence games. You need you need a couple wins like that. You need that that one to go into a little little lull per se. It's going to make practice a little better, especially you know when you're thinking about Mr. Hughes. <laughs> exactly. I, I just think that you don't want that loss, that taste of that loss mm -hmm. in your mouth for two weeks is a lot easier to go into that downtime off of a win. I I think it puts the coaches in a better mood. Maybe they don't beat on you as much <laughs> in practice, mm -hmm. not not for real. Come yeah, on, yeah. but you know, I, maybe they maybe they let up a little bit, uh, have a few more walkthroughs, a few more school sessions, that kind of thing. Maybe they don't feel like they've got as much to actually work on on the field. So I just think it makes the buy a little easier when you go into it off of a win. And so I think Fairview should come out of this thing feeling pretty positive about themselves. Only three other teams in action this week as uh, Ravenwood, Franklin, Summit, Indy all have a bye. And Brentwood and, Academy. And Brentwood Academy as well. So uh, Brentwood 
one of the teams. They're going to be traveling. They're going to take on Clarksville Northeast. What do you see from the Bruins? I like the way Brentwood is coming along. They just beat Dixon County last week. Um, they, you know, for, for the struggles, they're two and three overall, but sometimes it's not how many, but who. And both their wins are in region play. So they're two and oh in the region and um, still tied at the top of it. So you got to like that. And, and they're going for number three against Northeast. And um, it's a road game, but, but they've won on the road already against Rossview earlier this year. I like, I like what Brentwood's doing right now. You knew Ron Crawford was going to get things turned and headed in the right direction, maybe not quite this quickly. Playing with a lot of sophomores, but um, kind of building for the future, and they don't mind winning while they do so. And they'll be taking on a Clarksville Northeast team that actually, gosh, they just got pounded by Centennial last week. And Centennial on the road at West Creek. You like Centennial building on that Ravenwood win. Um, and so for them to come back out after that and beat Northeast kind of gives them some momentum as well. And now they go to West Creek looking to build further and get further away from that tough loss down at home against Independence a few weeks ago. Putting some distance between themselves and that, starting to kind of rebuild that good feeling that folks had about that team as the season began. Now you mentioned Independence. Kind of in interested to see what they're going to look like coming out of this bye week as we were looking at Andrew Bunch as a possibility as coming, coming out and uh, kind of, well, what's the team going to look like? <laughs> well, you know, the one thing they know is that if he doesn't come back when they come out of this bye week, they can still win some ball games. They might win them a little differently than folks have gotten used to them winning them, but they can still win some ball games with Adam Swayze at quarterback. He's done a great job. Again, they kind of had to retool, kind of change their, mm -hmm. their, their approach to how they went about things because they haven't been as prolific in the passing game as, as they are with Bunch back there. But, you know, the win that they had against Smyrna a couple of weeks ago I, against a 6A program, I just think really speaks volumes for that team and where they are right now. And I was at that game and I talked to some of the kids afterwards mm -hmm. and they had a really tough loss last year at home against Blackman. They were up 42 to 14 going into the fourth quarter. They lost that game 43-42. And it still resonates with them a year later. I, I don't think you're gonna see them lose another game like that. I think when they get a lead, they are very aware of the need to, you know, put their foot on somebody's throat. And, and I think you're gonna see them finish games. And I think that's something that you can look for down the stretch here as they get into some tough region games down there. They've still got Shelbyville to play. They've still got Laverne to play. And, and a lot of their season is still ahead of them. So coming out of the break, you know, they feel better, I think, if Andrew Bunch is back when they come out, but they feel good if he's not. Mm -hmm. Our uh, only other county game we have going on is Grace Christian Academy traveling on the road to Richland. And the Lions had uh, a home game last week against Moore County, and uh, it, I think that was kind of a, another welcome to TSSAA play kind of thing for them and welcome to 11-man football for that matter. Yeah, I mean, Moore County's an established program. They've had a lot of success down there, maybe not necessarily recently, but they have had some success again. Grace Christian, first year in TSSAA, first year of 11-man football, and they're going to have some games like that. But I think, obviously, they're moving in the right direction. They picked up a couple wins already, and I think that this is a game that they can go on the road and win down at Richland. Well, that's uh, all, our, all our teams here. It's in one of those quick, moody, Styron Auto football extras. We don't get many of those, it seems like. You know, there's always lots of teams to talk about. <laughs> when you've got 11 teams and, and they don't always play each other, this is, this is nice and short, short and sweet. We'll take these, huh? Well, I want to thank you for watching. As always, check out Mo Patton on MoPattonSports.com. Follow us on Twitter if you'd like as well, and we'll see you on Friday night.